You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, Square Pimp Brigade, on this episode? We are, I am so fucking excited. We are, this is a special show. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and it's another special show, because we have a special guest. But first and foremost, Harry, how are you doing? Me? Oh, my goodness. I'm having a great time, Dante. I'm having, uh, although it's very tough. I'm trying to keep these gators down during the holiday season. It's difficult. Difficult. Nobody says that. Difficult. Uh, Trey, you in the building. What up, man? You got a bag of weed. Mm. What up, yo? So, bag of weed. I think Dre's background finally matches what's going on inside his head when he smokes that volcano. Nothing. (laughs) It's just... If you want to see it, go to the YouTube channel. But uh, it's a it's a photo negative of reality. What did you go with this time, Andre? <laughs> That's me. That's you right there. You're back. That's yeah. just, just just a blemish. You're just a blemish on your brain. Nah, it. it's like abstract surrealism mm. using a Dadaist philosophy. Yeah, that's Mad Banksy, yo. That's no uh, <laughs> Banksy. <laughs> Is Banksy the hood version of Banksy? Like the yeah, knockoff? Yeah. Like when yeah, you get your mom uh, would buy you Mikey nah, the real. It's actually the real shit. He bit. Oh, oh man. is that what it Ain't is? Ain't that the funniest thing though, G? What? How everything is called the black version of. Yeah. Meanwhile, the re- the reality mm. is y'all the white versions of us. Yeah. You motherfuckers bitch your whole style, y'all everything from my I, essence. So I think- y'all try to be me. Y'all love my style. You love my style. Yo, um, give First it all, up. I'm not white. Morning. I'm not white. Just want to throw that out there. PSA, Andre not white. X. You are white, man. Yeah, I'm Andre, it's, it's Andre X Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> he the name Malcolm X. Dre. <laughs> Malcolm Dre. Um, <laughs> why don't you do the honors, Harry? And, well, uh, in the midst of all this chaos, we're, we're welcoming a, a guest, a return guest. who uh, was Friend our- of the show, son. That's Friend of right. the show all day, every day. Talented That's comedian, right. now podcaster, and was the last guest we had in studio before we locked everything down. So we want to get an update what's going on. The wonderful, the the talented Amanda Gale is with us. Yeah. Amanda, thank you. Yeah. 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 Thanks all, for having me. All day, every day. That, Amanda actually wrote that intro. She That's said, true. Could you please <laughs> add all day, every day to the end of my shit? And, and then in like, parentheses, she put extra ethnic. She's like ag- <laughs> aggressively urban. And she she put mad flavor. Mad, mad flavor in the delivery. And I was like, all right, I could do that. And she was like, fuck you, bitch, harder. I was like, all right. <laughs> I guess fuck you, bitch. I don't know why it's so hostile. Anyway, Amanda, how you doing, sweetheart? It's good to see you. Good to see you. I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. You look like it's like no pandemic at all. You just we look like we look like we in the book of Eli. You look like it's <laughs> book of Eli. You know, like you look you look like you in the city of Gardens of the Galaxy. The, anyway, whatever. No, well, Amanda <laughs> is uh, <laughs> took this seriously as a professional. She's she's she's. This is an appearance for her. Yeah, right? I, I mean, I took this seriously. This is just as ugly as I is. <laughs> Is that your performing sweatshirt, hoodie? 
It's my dress hoodie. <laughs> yes. At least that's get my some sun, my, dress my, hoodie. That's my Sunday hoodie. At least, you know, do something like Elvis. <laughs> get some like hoodie. diamond studs on the side that says Andre <laughs> or something. Amanda, before you came on, Andre did this. Mm. <laughs> Yo, my dress. I'm still stuck on this my dress hoodie. <laughs> that's your formal Thank you hoodie. For saying your that. formal hoodie that you wear for <laughs> for church and court appearances. God. Genuinely, thank you for saying that. I feel like hand. I got the COVID and the SARS together. My, oh, I look, my, eye, my eyes look like two vaginas. <laughs> I, when did that happen? What happened to you? Dog, I, I don't know what's going on. I got allergies is wilding out. Uh, my allergies look. look. <laughs> my eyes look like two vaginas. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Yo, you should try to find plants that has an antihistaminic effect that can help with your Yo, I, neutralizing I went, allergy. I went to school with antihistamine. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, she used, didn't she used to make Thanksgiving for everybody? Antihistamine? Yeah, yeah. She had a, a, good she had a, she had a brother named Nasal. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's a good family. Sis. Yo, let's get going. We don't want to yeah. waste Andre's dress hussy. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, this is important. <laughs> it's a goofy mood today, but welcome, Amanda, for coming through. You're, you're, you are looking great. You're perform. You know, you're yeah. dressed up for the event. We appreciate that. She, 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 she looking all post pandemic and shit. Like when I, when you look at Amanda, it's like, yo, this shit is over, son. I feel like stop being sheeple and wearing masks, and then. Then right. they look at us and we like, yo, this is the book of Eli, my dude. <laughs> I'm baby wiping myself down and trying to charge up my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's been going on, man? How how you been holding up? I mean, because last time we saw you was right at the end, just yeah. before the shutdown. I know that was the beginning of it, but I don't know. Like you said, I've I've loved this pandemic. I don't have to see anyone if I don't want to see them. Dope. Dope. Not to, I'm like, can we do this every year? This is great. I love yeah. staying in my apartment. So yeah, I was born for this. Yeah, it's like, see, you live in life like me because I don't want to do nothing. I just don't do it. Oh. <laughs> like my boy be like, yo, you don't come out. Nah, because I don't like you. Mm. Wow, I got to get <laughs> I with like you. you. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm not doing. Pleaser. Yeah, I'm not doing awkward. I don't want to do well, awkward ever. Amanda, la all right. So last time we talked about it, at the time you did not have, you weren't seeing anybody, and no. your proclamation was that you have, you will not sleep with anybody unless you are, uh, they are officially your boyfriend, right? Was right. that that was the stance? Yeah. So, couple questions here. One, has this <laughs> pandemic changed any aspect of that? <laughs> and uh, well, let's go with that first. No, I haven't uh, had sex with anyone this whole pandemic. I'm not seeing anyone. I have a boyfriend and um, it has not been easy. But thank God for you porn and thank God for um, <laughs> name the specific site. Yes. She, she I like you porn. porn. <laughs> she, she's she's just, just the category. Yes. <laughs> she's got brand loyalty. And I, I, and I like respect you. that. I respect Yo, that. Okay. that is you porn over porn hub. Porn hub is messy. Yeah, you porn okay. is organized. It's I like the interface. I like the user experience. So I do you porn. Holy shit. That's I, you funny. know what? I respect that. There's a couple <laughs> sites I don't fuck with. I never with said cause... porn and interface in the same fucking sentence. Um, I work in tech, so that's uh, why I, I think let, about those But things. let's be honest. You, oh, you porn funny. search engines are not what they should be. You put... <laughs> you put... Uh, Ebony double anal, and you end up there's a bunch of white girls on there. You like, <laughs> come on, you there's, can't make this better. What Dante's oh. saying, there needs to be some quality control over there at oh. Eporn, and he feels they like just they're dropping it the all ball. in. That's all the things I don't think about what? when I think about porn. I never thought about the logistics <laughs> of the, you know, like somebody designed them websites. Amanda, yeah. she's like, yeah, she ripped, that's the truth. And she they want to use it. It's got to be user friendly. I agree. Amanda I agree. do the shit where she go to the porn site and scroll to the bottom to see who created the site first <laughs> before she she don't want to see no titties, dick, or nothing. Who powered this engine? It's, I have called customer service on you porn actually. I have really one. Like, can I speak shit. to a manager? My um, you know, I can't get my search engine right. So yeah, yeah that's one of those. That shit is crazy. Yeah, anytime I need to get my I'll money, I'll say back, this: I'm there's some you. sites where you go. Uh, I don't think I'm getting the full results here. The search results are only pulling up limited stuff. You're like, I'm missing out. And that's the OCD that's part wild. where I go, I need to see. I like to choose. I like to make my choice 
and I don't uh -huh. appreciate like, them limiting my choices. I definitely okay. like XNXX and X video better than you porn. The user experience oh. is more fluid. <laughs> user experience. And, uh, I can try that. And I find the customer service, they don't leave you on hold a long time. <laughs> <laughs> they pick you right as soon as you call, hello. It's a dude spanking while he's talking to you, but I mean, <laughs> Man who looks at a at a Bukaki gangbang and goes like, the coding on this is all wrong. Yeah, <laughs> this Quality should have more video, views. Yeah. yeah, this should have more views than it does. What's wrong with this anyway. Okay. But so no dude, no COVID dick. No, going, none. No, no. God damn, you're not I ready. Mean, to, you're not ready to get the dust knocked off it yet. Not yet. No, I'm not. I mean. Again, the moments of desperation, there's, you know, there's tools for me. So thank God this happened in 2020 and not 1985. You, you didn't get weak one time, just, you know, just some COVID knockdown. Um, I think I, from a past lover, maybe, but not, I say lover. Oh, so like, like oh, you just <laughs> dipping back in the cabinet. Like, yeah, I would probably go to a guy that I've already hooked up with versus a new guy. I just like my trust. I don't know. Yeah. Now, is that because of trust sexually or trust COVID wise? You're like, ah, that guy seemed pretty clean. <laughs> it Come takes, on. I feel like men look at women that are attractive and like, oh yeah, I want to fuck her. And I, I don't really, and maybe I'm speaking just for myself, not all women. No, well, I never I say that. Bear, well, you never, I never say that. Not Dante, <laughs> but... I don't look at an attractive man and say, I want to fuck him. I say, like, I want him to flirt with me. I want him to take me on a date. I, I just, it takes me a while to want to, like, fuck someone. You like a crock pot. You like a slow simmer. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very just good men have I seen. Yeah, exactly. Do you, do you think that's common amongst women, or are you an outlier in that situation, Amanda? I think it might be common in the terms of, like, I think when men see all, any attractive woman, they think sex. And I think when women see an attractive men, they don't, they only see sex in certain men, not all men, not every attractive yeah, man. That's what I think. I think. I think, yeah, and I mean, men don't, we don't, it's a lot, it's, really, it's, it's a, not just attractive It's a women. lot of chicks we be like, <laughs> nah. <laughs> no. I done looked at some shit where I'm like, we got a lot of chicks what are you on doing? the show where we was like, nah, good. Really? I don't quote myself. Oh, Hold yeah. on. What, what Andre is saying is that it goes, even with, with unattractive women, you think about it sexually, <laughs> like as if a man and, I, and I'm, I think I'm, ass I'm friend, but her titties big. Yeah. I'd be like, uh -oh, I'm with Andre where you look at a woman, you go, I don't like all of that, but I could work with that. It's like if, if I was trapped on an island or if like, could I make Fam, that work if I had to survive? That's how most women look to me. It, it's like most women got something you could work with. Yeah, but son, you I think that's just youth. Cause I'm like now I'm like oh here go this bitch with the big knees again. <laughs> I can't fuck. That's a possibility, but also because one thing I do could dis one like thing could disqualify you. Like there's one thing that could disqualify you. Just like you be like this is something I can work with. There's I'll be like yo, she, I keep I don't know why Harry why I keep going back to that chick with the big knees. Yeah, that's come up a couple times. That seems to be haunting you as of recent. Did that happen over the holidays? Is that what it is? Every it's just, October, it's just, it's just something that I always stayed. That was a real thing. I tell you, it was a real thing. It was a girl with giant knees. She had on like thigh highs, and it looked like she had uh like you know what I wonder volleyball bro? pads, knee pads under the thigh highs. What's the quality of her meniscus? Does her having big ass knees imbue her with better tendons? Mm -hmm. Can she can she be like squatting at ninety eight? Is she gonna be walking it's, up? She can squat saying? in the bucket, son. That's what I'm thinking. Like, does her big ass knees serve a purpose? You know what I mean. Probably. You ever heard the, the the philosophy within the design? You denote the purpose. Maybe she was born to do some thick knee shit and she hasn't found it yet. Well, I mean, but that's what you would say back in the days in the Renaissance period where you had like a buxom, buxom chick and you was like, cause dudes were starving. They were like, oh, she, she could carry water, you, son. She could so carry maybe, a lot of water. Maybe she has just lived past her time. Her era was probably the 1700s where it was mad thick knee activity going on. She's like she a raptor. She's like a, you know what I'm saying? She could have been lit back she, in the day. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying it might be the, the big knee era. I don't know. It might have been. We should look well, into that, do some research. Uh, I'm sure Charles Darwin <laughs> has some evolution about what chicken knees <laughs> Fuck Darwin. do. Uh, but 
quick, quick. I don't even know why fuck Darwin. I'm going to get back to Yo, the Yo, son, that's, that's fighting words. Don't diss <laughs> Darwin. Bro. Darwin's the shit, bro. Darwin's the shit. Fuck Darwin. Oh, boy. This is, you got to rep your set. Listen, Dante. You, My set, black than a motherfucker. <laughs> fuck Darwin. Do you think, Dante, that uh, you were less selected back in the day in your youth? Like, were you just about it? Well, it was I, when lot- I was younger, I thought it was my op- my ob- obligation to fuck girls that wanted to fuck me. Obligation? Like, yeah, you're I helping like, out the oh, community. She want to <laughs> fuck me. I, got, I mean, what I'm going to do? Tell her no? I can't tell her no. So, Dante, like I took an oath. I'm like, I yo, I, I can't say no. Yo, just grab on. The, I get that. Grab on that tree. Hold on to that tree. Give me a second. You know, you've done it when you didn't really even care to. Yeah, yeah. Like yep. I felt obligated when I was in my twenties. I felt obligated, almost. I would say pressure. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I definitely what? pitched a couple bad games when I was just like, my heart not even in it. <laughs> and you just <laughs> you bail. <laughs> I, I didn't even give a fuck. I was like, I, I weak dick, don't care. I, don't, I, I'm not even here, bitch. I didn't want to be here. No, nah, I can't. I, I've never done that where I go. You know what oh, I mean? I did I, it. Like, I'm, like, say for instance, you get a uh, lovely young lady like Amanda and hasn't had the dust knocked off it since the COVID, and then she says, "Hey, come through." And knock it down for me, and then I go in there half ass. You gotta represent for the for the. You gotta rep. <laughs> now, right? do you feel wait, wait, repping men? Your the black rep community. Uh, what are you repping? All, that, all of it. Men. All that. that. I'm <laughs> repping Asian dudes. Team everything, USA. Everything. <laughs> I'm I'm repping Team Dick. Whatever that is. <laughs> team Dick. Uh, team wait, day. so all right. I was way more selfish in my. Why endeavor. do you? Why do you think that is, Dante? Though that you felt like the pressure and requirements to do because I don't have that same perspective because I came from a place where I I had to take what I could get at the time when I was younger. I don't have that same perspective. You don't. You're <laughs> different though. You don't have to take what you can get. You had. But I'm saying I don't share the same thing of like I'm trying to rep for team men. Nah, what are you say? You just team Dre. I'm about me. <laughs> I don't feel like it today, bitch. That's what it is. Just like that. I'm like, then, nah. It's just. I'm like, do you know that there's dudes all over the world not getting no pussy? And you, you I, gonna I've waste had that? Moments. You gonna yeah. waste that? It was. There's dudes was like, in it, Africa starving. Yeah. <laughs> it was like whack, and then you know when you just come to like the stopping moment, and then I, I just sort of like, all right, you want, you want to just stop this? <laughs> We could just not do this. That happens every once in a while, but it's yeah, we just pretty throw rare. the clothes on and that's it. Once I'm you don't there, even, I'm you there. Don't even, you don't even Drake because Drake can't, Drake don't even know how to cuddle, so he can't even. I mean, how about a good cuddle, like a half, a half, you know, like a five and a nice cuddle. <laughs> I'm having a guy who's a five. Five? No, no, like a, a, a performance five performance, wise. performance, and a wise. nice cuddle, like. Mm, mm, Fuck all that. Yeah, if I'm into the guy, that's great. It's, it's it's so weird. It has to be a vibe. I can't even explain it if I want to sleep with a guy. It's a vibe. I can't even tell you. I think that's what it's everybody does. It's not cute. It's just like, I, like I, it's weird. It's just weird. I don't know. I didn't need a vibe back in the day, to be honest. I, that's I, what I think yeah. the difference between men and yeah. women. I think women yeah. need a vibe and men are like, a she's pulse. cute. Or not I, cute. Whatever. She's a woman. She's a pulse. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think men need uh you you would like the, the vibe like, to be look there. at her diaphragm, that bitch breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Going up and down and up and down. It's crazy. I can't even contain myself. You know what they say? If she's breathing, play ball. That's how it works. So, I mean I don't know who the fuck says that. Well, uh, Harry. <laughs> the, what we've really discussed here is that I have a I, I'm a more a person who has just take on the responsibility and you guys are immature. That's well, the way I came think I I've been repping for Team Immature, bro. <laughs> That's your joint squad, gang, gang. <laughs> it's just team, team. I don't give a fuck. Mm-mm. Immaturity. I pay my taxes, but I'm immature. That's just smart. That's just smart, man. Uh, Amanda, do you think your your perspective on that has changed? Uh, you know, uh, a different age, like you know, five years ago or ten years before that, or has it always been you need a you need a, a major vibe before you can hook up? Yeah. With I've always been like that. It's like, it's not consistent, the people that I'm sexually attracted to, you know? I mean, it's not a consistent, people. it's not a consistent type, you mean? That's right. Yeah. Sometimes they're very attractive. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes, 
it's just that's that's why dating apps are hard because you're not get like you have to meet them in person then you get their like aura their vibe their confidence whatever it is i don't know but the uh x factor sometimes yeah i agree with that it depends on the, the like that's the whole package like yeah, everyone yeah. every I, man I, every once in a while i used to love a uh like a, a ugly girl yeah because you could I just just filth like a filth ball yeah. Yeah. And then you just just like riding a like riding a rent a car at 130 miles an hour. It's like a Dodge Sienna. <laughs> and you pay for up, the insurance. Yeah, you running up on the curb, hitting the speed bumps at 45. Boom, airborne. Cause you you know there's no investment. But I mean it's my responsibility. You gotta. I feel like you gotta finish strong, guys. Come on, we're well, all I, a team. I like to yeah. only if I feel like it. You know what? For me, it was always about gaining as much experience as I could. So even if I wasn't into it, I go, well, I, 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 I'm going to do the best I can. I give it all till the clock runs out. You know what I mean? Even if the game is behind, if I'm up by a lot, it doesn't matter. For me, it's like, all right, maybe not for this girl, but like I need yeah. to get the experience. I you need know the, the rest. basketball player that only kid that he dropped 30? That night, right, then, then the, the, everybody the lose. lose. Yeah. <laughs> Andre's you. like, "There's no eye and dick." I'm like, "Yeah, there, <laughs> there is. There is." He goes, "Oh, there, there is. is. All right, there is I'll, an eye and dick." I is, and then he goes, "I is a dick." My son got on the arm sleeve, the headband, nigga, stylish as hell, sneakers is clean, and you, and you team, losing by forty. Losing. You losing by forty. <laughs> No foreplay or defense. Man, I'm, way. Just, I'm going never to, play defense. You crazy? I'm like, come on, guys, let's get in the game. Let's get. In. <laughs> that's that. That's that's. You know, that's that's. I don't know if you know this, man. Dante that's trying to be LeBron, having I'm special trying to bring everybody together. Players. I'm trying to do political. I'm, I'm <laughs> political decourse after sex. I'm like, you know, we not we need to vote for the Senate. Got yeah, no. charity work organizing. <laughs> Both. I'm organizing. I got BLM, BLM on my shirt. I'm just all around like Muhammad Ali. Andre's just texting <laughs> on the phone when he's done with the game. It's a wrap. Nah, it's a nah, wrap. I'm playing Tetris. Harry's yelling at him. Get your head in the game. Come on. <laughs> we got a man. Do you know that that's that's classic orgy rules? Did you know that? Really? What is it? What is that? You got it. Like so, uh, if you're in a in a like in an orgy. Uh huh. Right, everybody got to get fucked. You don't oh, get to. Oh, really? You oh, yeah. People? Especially I'm not doing the, it then. This is you don't have your head in the game, man. You got to really. You're not committed you got the to the wrong this attitude. Orgy. You don't. Yeah. You don't. You got the wrong attitude here. Every because so it's, it's rude to say no to someone in an orgy. If it's like a, or, we're not just talking about like hooking up, but it's like if you it's like no, a, if you. it's an orgy, like I'm. <laughs> I've I've talked about this a couple of times. The the we the check out the what's the episode the dirty half dozen the dirt uh -huh. the dirty baker's dozen because it was thirteen. <laughs> so wait, Amanda. So to put this in context, he's not saying that you got to fuck everybody. He's saying if you're hosting an orgy, uh -huh. which is I don't I've never been in that situation, but this is my understanding. Yeah. You got to make sure that everyone gets taken care of. I'm thinking of host like a comedy way. Yeah, yeah, you got a dude on the stage and sacrifice. everybody down there fucking, and he's just throwing out jokes. Yeah, yeah. Put your child over in the corner, y'all. Hey, hey, guys, <laughs> hey, where you guys coming in from? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right. everybody because otherwise, if it everybody doesn't, if it yeah. jumps off, and this is probably like a, a surprise orgy, not like a, a, a like where you you. Charging not party tickets, plan, yeah. not like where you send out invites and stuff, but it just kind of breaks out. Everybody's hanging out, you yeah. know, watching the, the the Tyson fight, and then it just everybody just right. It's, it's a fact. It's usually during Tyson fights during his era. Many it's a lot of orgies going down, but everybody got to get fucked because if everybody doesn't, if everybody doesn't. First of all, it's a it's kind of an unless since you're talking about swinging, like real swingers who are just into that life. It's an it's an unnatural thing, and mm. so everybody needs to be taken care of. Uh -huh. If you don't, then they go oh, and then people get insecure, and then the lights come on. Not re well, they'll 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 be like rubble rubble. Here's the thing, rubble. Well, you're all Here's ugly the anyway. Isn't it's it? the same. <laughs> it's the same thing as sales. You don't want to give someone too much time to think about uh -huh. what they're doing because then they start to second guess stuff. You know, both good or bad, where they go. 
what am I, if you give too much time, if someone's into yep. it, they can just go with the flow. But when there's yeah. too much oh, time to think, it becomes, fast to me. oh, what am I doing? I'm a school teacher. Yeah. This is not what I signed up. I thought I we were see. going okay. out dancing. Uh-huh. He's, and then somebody yells, you're not even a school team. You're a power professional, dog. Yeah. You didn't get your degree. Just suck the dick and shut up. And then you're like, I'm not this type of person. Or you, not, know, you start. What, thinking, am oh, what am I doing? Am I doing? Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I gotta go see my grandma. Well, yo, D, <laughs> don't that mean that that moment is gonna hit that person eventually? That mean all it is. Yeah, is that when son, you but I'm not. Through, I'm not. I don't want to hit it on my watch. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, not see, always. Here's the, the other thing, Andre. Just not talking about orgies because I've never been in an orgy, but just other activities. Sometimes. Uh, especially women are they're scared because they have to look out for a lot of stuff, yeah, including their own also, reputation. But they're also they're I'm also worried about their, it's the the agency of the fact that what am I like? Is this okay? It's like a lot of times women are still in that position where they don't feel like they can express their sexuality. Um, but I would say this: I just thought about what you said. Is that feeling going to hit them afterwards anyway? And I'm like. Nah, people lie to themselves all the time. You can have, you can be in a twenty-person game. We've had porn stars in in tw- like one chick did a sixty-dude gangbang, and then she was on here like, "Well, I'm the type of woman. You the type of woman that fucks sixty dudes, right?" And I'm shaming yeah. you. Yeah, like Don't I'm saying six, sixty dudes. Like, a, you know, yeah, but it's it just, you once you're out of it, it's like you can always redirect, which is something that we've all experienced with somebody redefines the whole relationship into something else after oh, the you fact. you lie? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> redefine, redirect. Redefine, redirect, misspoke. <laughs> Mis- <laughs> I misfucked. I misfucked <laughs> on this one. Well, you pointed oh. this out, Dante, in the past. You talk about... uh a woman after the fact because she has to look out for all her stuff has to justify why she did or didn't do something so if she is with if she did fuck somebody she has to justify why she fucked somebody and if she didn't she has to justify why she didn't right you know right so if 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 she does then you could be a piece of shit and she's trying to justify well you know he does have two legs and stuff right so it's not that bad and if he doesn't you're like well he he got a hangnail you know what i mean it's like it just it's I think people are so worried about the agency and how the agency looks at you. You find that, Amanda, like is that in the back of your head, too? Or no, not really. Um, when you're having sex of like, I'm just saying it? in general, just uh, yeah. Like, is it is it do you have I mean, I, th- I think things are changing in a way that mm-hmm. women feel more empowered. But I mean, I think that agency, the culture is still prevalent. You yeah, know? it is. There's slut shaming culture still there that you feel like probably maybe that even directs my decision to only have sex with guys that I'm in a relationship with. But it may be like I feel like, oh, this is slutty, like he hasn't committed to you or you feel like you're being used or, you know, um, when you could just be like, oh, I enjoy this, too. But I do think there's right. still shaming. I do. I think it's in our psyche. It's just in our psyche that right, women right. who like sex are dirty and men. That's normal. Yeah, no. But I don't I don't know. You know, when we say, it, you know, I was just thinking when you said slut shaming, because it's not like anybody else is slut shaming. It's like you doing it to you. It's like you're shit yeah. on yourself. You know what I mean? But it's in the culture. It's, it's right. in the culture. There's like in covert messages that say if you like sex, then you are dirty and weird. If you're right. a woman, if you're a man, it's perfectly normal, you know? So, that's also a generational thing. It's going to take time. Like this generation is definitely much better with that yeah, for women, yeah. and it's it's safer yeah. and it's not as critical. But you're still growing up with like your family and your your parents that's talking right. about it, that's your grandparents generation. talking well, about I, it. I think we talk. We were talking about this in terms of uh, I doesn't. I don't know if I've said, but it's in terms like so culture. Culture seems to culture seems to always. Um, how should I put it? It guides the behavior. So consequence creates the culture and then the culture defines the action. So the analogy I I always use is like in LA, have you been out in LA before? No, you've been to LA. So if you're out in LA, I would say you can't jaywalk, right? Nobody jaywalks in LA. And even and because if you jaywalk, you can get a ticket. Like a cop will oh, give you a you ticket. Can if, die, bro. Yeah. Fuck the ticket. Yeah. You're gonna 
die. Well, yeah, but I mean, we come on, Jay. We jaywalk all the time. In L.A.? In New York. I'm saying in New York. L.A. In New York. Andres. Hell yeah, Jay Walk, gang, gang. But in L.A., not the fuck me. Uh-uh. And, yeah. to, Andre's right in the sense. Every is a highway, bro. Yeah. I'm not Jay Walking nothing. But I'm saying in, in a town or like something you, I mean, you. But, bro, I was following the street laws out but, there, dude. But that's my point. That's that's exactly my point. My point is, the, even if you don't get a ticket for Jay Walking, right, the culture says that this is inappropriate behavior. Yeah, right. Whereas in New York, if you get a ticket jaywalking, you're going to curse the cop out for, <laughs> for like, yo, you don't have nothing else to do, you punk ass. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's almost a hostile thing. So the, so here you have two laws and two ends of the coast, and you have, you literally have a difference of culture in one, in one on the East Coast and on the West Coast where you don't do it and you don't. But that's because it, it was led by the fact that you would event, you would in, initially get tickets for jaywalking. So there's a consequence and then there's a, the consequence creates the culture. And then. No, it, I think it's different from what created that culture. It's the shape of the city that created it. New York has these small ass streets and, and you can reach the other side in a reasonable time. L.A., the roads, bro, are fucking multiple lanes that you change. Yeah, but not everywhere. I mean, we don't. But most we places, don't. which I feel like that is the same reason how you say the design denotes purpose. The way the city layout is what makes the culture. Oh, the tiny road. All right. You make it so you're from Queens, like Queens Boulevard. How many motherfuckers die on Queens Boulevard all the time? And what's the nickname of Queens Boulevard? I don't know what they call it. Boulevard of Death. Oh. The, the, the way that shit worked denoted the culture, the way that place right, was set but up. No, but people but are the still... second you go on the inside streets, don't nobody call it inside streets death. You walk all over the no, place because it but, small. But people still get killed on Queens Boulevard, even though the culture is, is, is that. Even though they've named it Boulevard of Death, they still do it. It's a cultural thing. You don't... There's no consequence to, to, I mean, I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying there's no consequence, and people focus on the consequence, and then the consequence becomes culture. Because if you jaywalk in L.A., the people around you look like, uh. yo, even on the little streets, say, yo, what are you doing? You but know? I think they look at you like that because they're like, yo, you're trying to die. you <gasps> actually trying to go. I don't think people think don't of think it. People care about the hundred dollar ticket that much because people speed. People park at Here, fucking no. Fire I'll, give you, I'll give you a different people thing. Break the law of culture about, every day. How about this? I'll give you a different thing. In New York and LA, this happens a lot. But in New York, like you'll just walk down the street and see a homeless guy full on taking his shit in the middle of the street, <laughs> yeah. and people don't bat an eye. You keep moving because yeah. it's a different culture. Yeah, it's a different. In New York, you just. We got to go where we got to go. I mean, nobody nobody crosses the BQE. You don't see some nigga waiting for, to cross the BQE. Although I've seen motherfuckers jumping over the divider on highways in New York. It's a diff. I'm just saying it's a different culture because of, like what we we're talking about, even with sex, there's an agency that says even though oh, you should empower yourself, you should, but there's a difference in culture. My, my point being, it's the the culture changes. It's just like, you know, when you, you know, when we, we would talk, I always talk about it in reference to like Black Lives Matter and stuff. If you got cops and they're killing black dudes and no, there's no consequence, then what's the thing? If you realize that the thing, the way things is changing now is because there's actually consequence. When you look at these, like these Karen videos and this chick is like, you're a nigga, you're a nigga, and she's screaming it. And then the next thing is, fired, lost a job, kicked out of the condo. Like, there's a consequence to it is what starts to change the culture. When there is no cons consequence, it doesn't change. Now, I'm not saying that the consequence changes the culture. I'm saying the consequence starts the thinking of this. So it's like the, even the slut shaming, years and years of slut shaming. So the culture is in place for what you're talking about, Amanda, in terms of, you know, yeah. women, you know, the slut shaming, that it's not even, it may not even be prevalent in your situation, but it's in your head because of the culture that we grew up with, you know? Right. Exactly. And that's, so I'm, I mean, I think there's an, a different element in that. Um, I wonder, um, you know, I, and I and I say this all the time. It's like if you want to not have that uh, dictate your behavior, you yeah. got to really work at it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so because the feeling is like, oh, I'm being a slut. And then you go, then you have to have this come. I'm an empowered woman and I can do, I can make my own decisions. Yeah. And, and everybody's going, look, are you, are you going to fuck me or not? Like, <laughs> like, you know, this is all yeah. going, this, this court case is going in your head. You know what I yes, mean? Yes, it's complicated. If you definitely hear both, in, both messages both back and forth. You know, the slut shaming and then like, look, I'm sexually empowered. So, mm. Amanda, do you feel like that? You're pretty confident comedically and stuff, and you definitely talk okay, about okay. sex on social media in, in that sense, <laughs> meaning sexually, like mm. you have no qualms about writing jokes about it and talking about no. it. But do you feel sexually empowered as an individual? Yeah, I do. I do because I mean, when I'm with a partner that I trust, and again, a lot of my decision to, to be selective with a sexual partner is because I do have. I, I get attached. I definitely bond with a guy after sex. So right, it's right. to make my life less complicated. That's really right, more of a, the reason than feeling like a slut. More that's than that. super mature to yeah. even recognize yeah. that. Like, Andre's not mature at all. But when, <laughs> it, when, it, when it comes to... In fact, to, I think Andre's regressed, actually, as but, he gets older. <laughs> but his, his decisions... And he smokes more weed. A lot of his decisions are mature just because he's in touch. He, he know he don't have a lot of feelings, but the ones that he has, they they he's very clear about it. So Andre would be like, "Nah, yo, I'm gonna have two, three girls." Like, "Nah, that's pro- that's proud." Nah, I'm good. I don't even know if I want to have one for real. <laughs> so it's like he's, but he's he's. It's a mature thing to recognize that this is. This is how I feel. And, like this yeah. is just I don't really want that. Like that's I a know. mature thing to go to not get into the minutia. Yo, I I don't want to do that. that I don't want to do that. That is so the opposite of what a lot of guys do, by the way. With, I know. So what Amanda is doing, she goes, I think this is gonna be a problem down the line. So yeah. let me make sure that I don't get involved. As opposed to a guy like a girl is like breaking beer bottles and if, if she's yeah. like, let me see if I could get in on that. Right, right, right. <laughs> She's not with a boyfriend. No one's stopping her from breaking instance, the beer bottle. Somebody is working at a Foot Locker and is fucking their manager, like that. <laughs> right? That, Who that, hasn't been there? Right. I'm uh-huh. saying. Right, Andre. Wild I mean, kids out there, man. <laughs> wild kids. And yeah. then you get fired from Foot Locker. You got to move over to Foot Action. Is that correct? Andre? <laughs> no, I was working at what was it? No, I did work at Foot Action. Yeah, I remember you saying you worked at Foot Action. I think you made your way through the whole circuit. Champions, I mean, the <laughs> whole thing. Foot Locker. And then a very short uh, stint at KB Toys. It was very interesting. He's working at, he's working at DSW now. Just Yo, you know, the litany of part-time jobs that I got fired from. <laughs> Andre did you a, found uh, comedy, Dre. Andre pulled a train Ooh. at Payless. With a, <laughs> he did a short stint. Everything, son. <laughs> He said at the thrift shop in the shoe department. <laughs> he don't give a fuck. So Amanda, yeah. can, all right. So I want to get maybe a female perspective on this, uh, as if you know other women, not necessarily you. How's the pandemic been treating your friends and stuff? Like, have they gone wild with it, or what's going on? Like sexually, it's normal, normal. I think in the beginning, everyone was really scared. Oh my god, I got, what if I get COVID from this guy? And now mm. people are just like. I met him on a dating app. We're going to go to this restaurant. We're going to eat outside. We're going to fu- like, I, I don't feel like people, I don't have any, I have a few friends that have been crazy cautious during this pandemic, but most of my friends have been just kind of doing it. Just kind of doing it. I just yeah. feel like people are over it. They're over the restrictions, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, real, real quick. I want to shout out. Um, I don't know if you heard this Dre. I don't know if I even told you, but Keith, Keith had a um, stroke. Keith Robinson had a stroke. Had another oh stroke. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, he had another so stroke. So please, uh, fans, if y'all, you know, Keith is a fan of the show, please send your thoughts and prayers to Keith. Go on his social media and tell him, you, you know, tell him to like, get better, say. Um, <laughs> so he uh, get back on the streets and make women uncomfortable again. Like, we know Keith. Keith We're Keith's Keith, natural place. Keith told me I love this COVID because I could just wear a mask legally. Like, <laughs> He's the one who got excited. He's like, oh, I could just be creepy. He just, you know, he's like just looking at, every, he he looks at you over the mask and still look creepy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How you doing there, young thing? So, yeah, but he's, uh, he had another stroke and, uh, oh boy. 
Yeah, it's I'm my so boy. I'm so sorry to hear. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I actually had a dude, uh, and I wanted to sh shout out fan fan of the show too. Um, I, did I tell you this, Harry, that this guy Dizzle. Uh, I'm familiar committed, with Dizzle, but you do what, you didn't I mean, mean I know Dizzle? Yeah, yeah. You know he killed himself, committed suicide. No, you know Dizzle like personally. I, I know do. Him. I mean, yeah, we've been in contact with 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 stuff. Jeez. Yeah, he killed himself. So this is a real <laughs> Jesus. Hold on. Yeah. When, how did you find this about? So, so I, you know, I do the, the, he's done my, um, he's done my, my, I do a, a comedy workshop, like writing workshop on Zoom where like, you know, I'll have like 15 people on Zoom. Yeah. They I spit remember the Dizzle. premise out and I'll just, you know, like pump it up, why it works, why it doesn't work with, you know, and he had taken my class a couple of times and then I, he had responded to me where he wanted to do a one on one like an hour personal cons consulting of about his comedy, right? Um, so another thing, if anybody wants to do that, they you know they can hit me up on my website and whatever. And um, he did a he did this joke, like I didn't really know him at first. I didn't know he was following the podcast, but he he did this. The joke started like, "So I'm ugly," and I was I like, "Remember that, right? You remember that?" And then um, you're like, "You're not." And I'm like, yeah. like, I mean, you're not handsome. What's wrong like, with saying that though, huh? What's wrong with saying that? No, it, because it, he's not. He wasn't ugly, so it's comedically yeah, it didn't think, make sense. Y'all, y'all know Shaba. Yeah, Shaba yeah, ranks. Yeah, yeah. Come Mr. Ugly Man. Come Mr. Yeah, yeah, ugly yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah but, it, these are words you can give yourself whatever power you decide, and you can man, like you can decide how you want to play this shit. I'm fat, black, and ugly as ever, but however. <laughs> I stay Kooji down to the side. Like, yeah, but J like, Jay, isn't that? Do it. But that's me? an that's an empowerment of. But you could he could have that mindset. Yeah, but it wasn't that. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't like, know. Like Shaba was like, I mean, he was embracing his ugly, and he was getting laid, and you know what I'm saying? Where where it's just like when he said that. I, so, like we were talking about, he was like, I saw. So anyway, I'm ugly, and I go wait, wait. Okay, first of all. In order for you to, to in order for the, and I'm not saying you can't make the joke work because people will go on the ride with you. But I'm always, when it comes to comedy, that truth is the most important thing. If you don't believe that, right, then it, a lot of times it doesn't ring true. Um, it's incongruent with your comedy set. And so I was like, do you, so when he said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ugly. I looked at him like if you know, like if you're a, a decent looking guy and you start off with so I'm ugly. Right. The audience will resent you sometimes. Like, you know, you get a pretty girl yeah. and she'll be like, it's like I can't get laid and everybody's going, bitch, shut up. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's, it's just it's so inconsistent. And, and I'm not saying, Dre, honestly, Dre, I'm not saying that I saw it then. But a, a lot, and I'm, and I'm, we know. I mean, I just perform with Gary Vita, and Gary Vita does a lot of self-deprecating stuff and whatnot. But it, it was just really like, and I was like, well, do you? So I didn't say. It's funny because I didn't say you can't do a joke about that. I go, do do people tell you you're ugly? And he was like, nah, but I know it, you know. And I'm like, so nobody tell where? Like where are you getting? I mean, I'm. He wasn't a. You know, he wasn't a dapper dude, but he was. A, he was not ugly. I remember even. Average, I remember thinking that because my thing. Yeah, and, did, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, sure. Yeah, if, I remember. Like, go, here's he's the thing. Even ugly. in comedy, Dre, it's funny you say that because even if you go a guy who's unattractive, he goes, "Yeah, so I'm ugly." You go, "All right." You it, it, it piques your interest because you're like, "Well, where's he going with this?" You know what I mean? But he really wasn't going nowhere with it. He was just did not like himself. He just really didn't like himself, and then he he corresponded with me a few times, and uh, and we we I think we might have did a consultation or two, and maybe no one consultation, and we we talked, and I was like, dog, you, you know, I was like, you you know, I like I never when I teach comedy, I don't ever say you can't do this or you can't do that. I just go, well, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, what are you really trying to say? What like what is the truth of this? Right. So if he thinks he's ugly, it's fine. He can talk about it. It's like even if everybody doesn't think he's ugly, it's interesting. It's an interesting bit to talk about why yeah. this guy who's fairly average looking or, or even above average looking would think 
why does he think that? To delve into that is what makes the, in, the bit interesting. So I'm delving into it, and he really had no explanation other than it's just, oh, I know it. I know. And I'm like, do people tell you that? He's like, um, they have. I go, but is that like a thing when people say that? No. So this is more about how you feel inside. And we were digging into it to find the root of it so he could write the joke. And then, um, and I was like, this, this, nobody looks at you and goes, this is an ugly dude. And so yeah. it's a harder sell because, you know, one thing about comedy is that you, you have, there has, we have to deal from a base level where we're in agreement. you know if if we're talking if i'm doing uh if i'm a dutch comic and i'm talking about salted thick pickled fish uh, you i'll go with you but you got to explain to me what the f i don't why can't dutch people like pickled fish they can <laughs> i'm just saying if you're not familiar with it you you want to hear it i mean it's actually fine i'm just saying but you got to explain it to me do you, you you understand what i'm saying dre right like if it's something they don't understand, they'll go on the ride with you, but you got to, okay, let me explain what, you got to explain that first before, because there's the humanity in it where, there's the humanity in it where um, you're going, I'll go on the ride with you, but just explain it to me. In, in fact, it's interesting. I think it's even interesting when it's, you know, when it's something that I don't agree with and you, and it brings me something that I would, you, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, like you're bringing yeah. something to me that I don't understand. I'm willing to go on the ride, but, but explain it to me first. You can't right, do right. the, you, you can't be like, well, it's the Vulcan Shore pickles is much better than, the, and I'm like, dog, I'm, you lost me. What you documentary know? did you watch, bro? What, what the Vulcan Shore? Vulcan Shore pickles, salted pickle fish. Son, <laughs> I, you know, Harry knows I watch <laughs> Mori, I watch Mori Povich and deep, deep dive documentaries. You got like yeah. three uh, more salt pickle nothing references in between. right now. Nothing in between. <laughs> I'll tell you no way I Dante learned. Dante will uh, talk to me an hour about a documentary about uh, the history of slavery. And then he goes, oh, I got to go with Little People's Week on the Mori Povich show. <laughs> little People's I do, Week. I do. Little I do People's like a little. It's funny as shit. I, I was watching. Like, it was, you know, I, like, I was watching Action Bronson. Get it? Fucking delicious. You ever watch that? Hell yeah! And he goes all over. He goes all over the world, and he'll. So he went to Iceland and went to chefs in Iceland. And they was fucking salted with pickle fish. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> all right. I knew was, it came from somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> but it, but this dude. So I called to confirm about the um about the consultation, and his mom picked up, and his mom was like, he he had passed. He, he, first she said she passed away, and I was like, oh, um, you know, and I just called back to check up. And then she was like, well, he committed suicide. And I'm like, man. Oh, man. And then oh, man. I felt bad because like, I'm, I felt like, you know, I was in, I was incommunicado with this dude and I felt like I should have been more, you know, you always, hindsight is 20, 20. I was like, man, I, then I stopped, you know, it's, it's on Monday morning quarterback. And like, I remember he did this joke about, maybe it's just me. He did this thing about being ugly and I was trying to explain it and he couldn't really explain it. And it was just, he was like, no, it's just, it just, I just am. And I was like, you know, it's um, sad that that uh, that sometimes you, your own perspective of yourself is not accurate, and it you can make right. it very negative. Yeah. You know? and, yeah, yeah, and it ends up affecting. It if, be, uh, sometimes you know, it's like art imitates life, sort of mentality. Yeah. Like your mentality, then you, if you think that's what you are, you behave that way. You know, and yeah. you your self esteem is very low because that's, of that. And it's that's sad. a that's a really good point. I wanna. Let's let's uh, shut it down, and when we're gonna do, we're gonna do Amanda. If you can hang out with us for a little bit, and we're gonna do. Well, uh, before we shut down, I want Amanda. Um, Amanda's doing it. She just started a podcast, so I want Amanda uh, yeah. just to let us uh, know uh, about the podcast, what it's, uh, yeah. who she's doing it with, and all that. So yeah, yeah, we'll do um, all the plugs, and then we'll pick up yeah. and, and continue on. All right, so, um, talk about the podcast. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. let Thirst, us know. The podcast is Thirst Trap. I do it with very funny comedian Natalie Cuomo. Um, we're found at the thirst at thirst trap the pod on Instagram. Uh, it's about we talk about social media, we talk about dating, we talk about lifestyle, we answer listener questions. So if you have a question about dating or, or anything, job, friends, anything, mm. message us on thirst trap the pod on Instagram. Mm. And um, yeah, check us out. New episode drops every Thursday. And uh, yeah, so okay, Dre, do your plugs. 
Yo, Andre D. Thompson, uh, between spots, Andre D. Thompson on all of it. Just type that in on your phone. You will find me. All right. Harry, talk to me. Uh, you could go to my website, uh, IHateComedy.com. That's where I'm doing all my stuff at. Uh, I don't have any live dates at the moment, but I'm uh, probably more in the spring. Um, I'm still doing Catalyst Wrestling, which is going on. And uh, also definitely check out the Man School 202 uh, Instagram, Real Man School 202. And also the Man School 202 YouTube page. We want subscribers for all of that to help us keep growing. But most importantly, the uh, Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, and you're going to, that's where you can get bonus episodes, including uh, our continuing conversation with Amanda and us. A lot of other extra stuff, us messing around, some extra uh, bonus video that's up there and uh, also premium content and access to the Q&As. We will yeah. answer your questions first and foremost. So, Yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a few ways you can support us. You can always like us and subscribe to the YouTube page and si subscribe to our to all our social media. But um, the best way to help us out is to sign up for the Patreon. Uh, that's uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, GYBB, get your boss back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. We're going to see you behind the paywall on Patreon. Um, I love y'all. Let's do it. Let's get it. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.